so it's replaying a specific scene within this prism. Gang Fox, I'll have to go over that at one point. How much I actually really psychological horror is such a strangely used term. How that there's multiples of horror that are used within a way to create a form of psychological. It's a mixture of three different forms of horror, which we could say that te that uh, um, terror is a greatly contributor to horror. You know what? Hang on, real quick. Before before I get into this, I'm gonna analyze something for you real quick, okay? If we take a look at this scene, this scene right here, I can easily name out two different forms of horror out of the three that Stephen King says are the only three types of horror to exist. Stephen King being the father, like probably at this point, the, the, the greatest writer of modern horror that there there is. So, Stephen King says that there's three different types of horror. That there is gross-out horror, as you can see from the man being shot here, our Mobius agent, this is gross out of order. It's to say that there is something we don't want to see, something disgusting. It's the being inside of a dark room, as, as Vincent always puts it, and feeling something wet, something soft, squishy, something that makes noises and smells disgusting. Spatter of brain, blood, and the amount of detail they put within the back of his head exploding, the particles we can see out of it, as well as the blood spatter itself. It looks really great, honestly. The other form of horror that's used here is what most people usually think of as psychological horror. That's called terror. Now, when I say that I love haunted places, that's generally going towards terror. Things we know of that aren't scary in any other context except whenever put in the context of being scary. If we look at these photographs behind here, this is just a photograph of two people's faces. If those pieces there weren't missing, there'd be nothing but, like extraordinary about them. They'd just be photographs. But now that I'm in a scary game, now that I know that they're off-putting, I suddenly feel off-put by them. Same thing by each one of these photographs over here. Individually, they mean nothing. They're not actually, well, I guess maybe one or two of them are, have a little bit of a gore factor to them. The picture of an eye may be unsettling, but in another setting, if I was in a bar and that picture of the eye was there, it wouldn't be unsettling. It's just part of the bar. It's terror. Things that are, um, feel like they're, things that are mundane that suddenly become extraordinary. The camera suddenly becomes very horrific because of the context of where it is. The, uh, the entire photography setup. Because, like, the cube is here, now it suddenly becomes an element to the horror. That's considered to be terror. The last thing is horror. And that's not really displayed here, but I'm sure it will be in this game later on. This is what makes it an action horror game. Monsters themselves. Things that can harm you. Um, guys with the machete. Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers. Things we generally think of as slashers. Those are parts to horror. While what we think of, like, psychological horror should not be just considered terror. Terror is great on its own. But, as you can see in this scene, terror and gross out are used together to create a specific scene. Now that right there is generally how you think of psychological horror, because it uses multiple elements of not just the room, but also multiple elements of horror itself to create a terrifying scene. Now, I'm pretty sure this game will do it later on, where we'll also have horror mixed in, where I'll be chased down, and more than likely killed. Because I'm not good at games. Back to the game. Team leader. One bullet. Straight through the head. 